Hey everybody, welcome back to One Seed, One World. So this area that I'm sitting, squatting in, uh, may look a little nondescript and kind of just a whole lot of nothing. Um, but if you had seen in the spring, this was one of my test gardens that I put in, or test garden areas. And the primary, th the the primary plant that I put in here were red and white potatoes. Uh, initially, I had done this side of the garden with the red and white potatoes. That side was going to be corn and amaranth. Um, the corn sprouted and got about that tall before rabbits came and sheared them all off and ate all of my blue clay corn that I wanted to test out. So what I ended up doing was planting a new batch of potatoes. Amaranth on the end hasn't really done a whole lot. It's pretty tiny as amaranth goes, and I'll show you that here. Uh, it's maybe a couple feet tall at, at best, um, which at this point, which is, this is only the second year I've grown amaranth, but this is the biggest amaranth I've ever grown. Uh, and it's really because I keep doing it in these test areas that are really too shady. Amaranth needs full sun, and these areas that I'm planting in these gardens do not have full sun. They are a uh, few hours a day at best. Anyway, so back to the potatoes, though. Uh, in previous years when I've planted potatoes, I had just like these long, gorgeous rows that the you know, the foliage on them look beautiful all season long, and then, you know, towards the end of the season, they die off, and then you can start harvesting. Uh, now, this year, with the first batch that I put in here, they started to die off really early, and I don't know, it may have been a blight, and so I don't know if blight got my potatoes. The one thing that makes me feel a little bit better about it is that the second batch of potatoes that I put in still have green plants they're still coming in um, you know they haven't even I guess really reached full maturity yet and I think part of that has to do with this being such a shaded spot however blight normally if you get it on your potatoes it's, it's a, a fungal infection that that gets you know initially into your here's one here uh, this plant is not affected at all but Normally it would get your leaves start to turn brown and mottled looking and then the vine dies off and then if it's left too long it gets down in the tubers and will destroy your potatoes and so then you end up with nothing. So because these died off early and the other ones were not affected at all I'm wondering if maybe it was not a blight. Maybe there was some other kind of issue. So what I'm wondering is did blight take my potatoes? And I wanted to see if I've got anything in here on this initial batch. Now I do see like, so this one here came in, or this one and this one here, they're not, they weren't covered enough. They had popped up out of the soil and so they've got green spots on them. And you can see the, the green spots there on potatoes. Don't eat green potatoes. Green is not healthy for you. Uh, this would be a, a poisonous, basically. You, do, you don't want to eat that if it's green. Your potatoes should be brown and, and or, or red, depending on the variety you're growing. You see the underside that was not um, exposed to the sun is the way a potato should look, even though it's very tiny. But if you've got stuff like that going on on your potatoes where it's green, don't use those. Those are no good to use. So there were just two up here that were like that with the green spots on them, and that's fine. I mean, you're going to have, you're going to lose some over time, and if I lose a couple to sun exposure, that's okay. What I'm wondering is if, do I have anything else in here? that I can use. And I don't know if I do. And so I wonder if the vines died off too early from whatever got them to actually even have a decent potato. There's nothing else right here. 
so that's sad. Now here's a dead vine here. All right, we got a potato here, but it's got something that has eaten through it. So got a little potato here, but you see, look at that. That's not a good potato either. Something has got into that. Nothing. We've got nothing. Oh, here's a little tiny one. About the size of a marble. So, oh, here we go. These are not massive potatoes. These are more like the little like new potatoes that you would get. But that's a good usable potato. But in the past, when I've dug up my potatoes, normally by now I would be digging up, you know, big clusters of tomato of uh, potatoes that would be much bigger than this little guy. And whatever, I don't know if, I'm guessing it might have been a blight. Yeah, there's nothing there. So I think that this test garden, at least for this side, oh, wait a minute. Man, I spoke too soon. They definitely did not. <laughs> Here's another marble sized potato. Very sad. But we have some good potatoes as well. Some new potatoes. I mean, they're called, I, you know, you call them new potatoes, but like the little size potatoes. I'm okay if they're not like big giant bakers. You know, a lot of the potatoes we use, we put in with like a, like a pot roast or something and you get those smaller size, you know, like fingerling potatoes or like the little small ones. But overall for a crop, this is looking awful. This test garden so far is a failure. So this is something that I especially want to share with new gardeners. If you are not ex experiencing success with your first, you know, trial crops, whether it's potatoes, tomatoes, cucumbers, whatever, every year is a little different. You know, I've had, like last year, I grew a whole line of, of cucumbers. They did almost nothing. I think I got like seven cucumbers all of last year. This year, I had so many bushels of cucumbers that I, a lot of them went bad. I couldn't keep up with them all, they, and they just kept coming in. I've had some years with tomatoes where I've got just baskets and baskets and baskets of tomatoes that I can't even hardly keep up with. And then other years, you know, the weather is different or fungus comes in or something. Uh, the, in 2018, my tomatoes, it rained that whole summer. I think it started raining around the 4th of July and didn't stop till Thanksgiving, is what it felt like. But almost all my tomatoes rotted that year. But then, you know, other years, you know, you end up with so much that you don't know what to do with. So, if you are a new gardener, or even, you know, if this is any of your second or third year gardening, just be aware not everything is going to be a success every single time. It's okay. It's a learning experience. Um, and so, or sometimes it's not always even just a learning experience. Sometimes you do something wrong and it doesn't turn out, or you try something new and it doesn't turn out. Um, or some other times, Mother Nature is just not going to cooperate. You're not going to have a good season. You're going to have drought. You're going to have excessive rain. You know, there's all different things that that can affect it. You, you maybe one year like the bugs are insane um, and eat half your plants. But don't don't give up is the point. Learn from the different things. Take what Mother Nature gives you, and plan your garden for next year, because you will have successes, and your whole garden will not be a success. I had a very successful bean 
and tomato and pepper harvest this year. Cucamelons did fairly well. Um, my tromboncino squash came in great, but my zucchini completely failed. This year looks like this test garden for the potatoes. Oh, this is sad. They're so tiny. And I, I think maybe part of it might have to do with lack of sun. I don't, and again, I'm not, these died off really early, the, the vines did on this side. That side still has green vines. Like they, they're not even to the point where you would harvest them yet. So maybe I'll get more on that side with my second planting that was later than I am on this first side that died off so quickly. But most of these, because the vines died off so quick, you know, the potatoes did not get enough uh, photosynthesis and whatnot to feed down through the leaves uh, down into the tubers and actually give me a good crop. And so this, now I know that this area is not going to be a good place to plant potatoes next year. I will need a, an area with better sun, maybe, uh, I'm just thinking it's the sun thing, I don't know. I've got a bunch more like little tiny green ones here. Those I can't use. That one was underneath. Let's see what's here. This plant seemed to have done a bit better. Oh, there we go. Among all the failure, we have success. Again, they're not big potatoes, but I like these kind of smaller potatoes. They're great roasting potatoes. They're great for um, pot roasts and stuff where you can mix all these in. Like new potatoes, fingerling potatoes, that kind of thing. So those are all good. Only good for one meal <laughs> so far. <laughs> when you stick it in a pot roast, that's probably not even enough to add to the crock pot. But it's a start, and I'll take what I can get. Take what Mother Nature gives you. Right? It's not always going to be perfect. It's not always going to be success. But you just take what you can get, learn from it, and move on. Here's another one. Uh, I thought it was a big potato. It's this big clump of dirt. All right, I'm going to dig through these some more, and then we'll see what we come up with. Okay, so I've been digging along through here with my hands. You know, a lot of times with when you're digging up, you know, if you're digging up a field of potatoes, you're going to need like a shovel or a pitchfork or something. But this was just a test garden that had fairly loose soil. Uh, and so I can just kind of go through it with my hands. And, you know, we're getting a, a little bucket here. Or this is actually a planter that I'm just using. But... What I'm finding, like that's a pretty decent sized potato, right? It's not like one of the giant ones that you would get in one of your like restaurants. There was a, sorry, side note. There was a, uh, kind of like, it was like one of those, almost like a, a food truck, but it was like a trailer that uh, was around town for a lot of years here. I haven't seen it here recently, but they did like a lot of barbecue and that kind of thing. But man, they would have these potatoes that were like, just massive. They were huge. And then they would pile them with like pulled pork and different sauces and sour cream. And they were just insane. Like it would feed a small country. So it's not one of those kind of potatoes, but you know, decent, decent sized baking potatoes. What I'm fun. So there's two things that I'm finding. One, the white potatoes seem to have done better in this test garden. Uh, they did better here than the red. Um, so maybe the reds were the ones that died off sooner. Also, I remember watching this throughout the summer and I saw when they started to die off. And normally like if you think you have a blight or something, you're going to want to get rid of all the foliage. Just burn it off, pull it out, whatever, because if you do have a blight, it will spread throughout your whole potato crop and wipe it out. 
but I just saw them dying off and this was a test for me and I was like it's a small area I mean I could have done this area three times as big but I just wanted to do a little test garden here and that's another thing uh, you know to think about is that if you are trying something new uh, or a new area to plant in maybe don't put all of your potatoes in one basket as it were you know try different smaller sections that way if something doesn't come out the way you want it to if it fails uh, then you're not losing a whole lot of time and energy and money that you put into like this massive area that it all went bad if you can do it and you've got a section try different crops and see what comes out and, and how it does and then you can learn and maybe you get something out of it maybe you don't but at the, at the very best if if the crops don't come out the way you want, at least you've learned some things without losing too much time and energy out of it. But you know what? I'm not completely disappointed in this. Uh, and I'm not done yet, but you know, I've got a little, I've got a bucket of tomato, or tomatoes. I've got a little bucket of potatoes here that will feed Mitzi and I for several meals. And it let me learn about growing things in this area. Now I know that this is not a good area necessarily to grow potatoes. I don't think it gets enough sun. I don't know what killed these things off so early on this side. Whereas that side of the, of the, the test bed, I still have potato plants coming in. They're still green, they still look healthy. Uh, I can see where you know, some bugs and stuff have eaten off the foliage, but there's no, there's no kind of fungus or blight that's killing them off. They, they still look healthy. So there's still potential to get a lot of, a lot more potatoes out of here. Um, so I'm going to let them keep going and keep digging through here and see what happens. I don't, I don't know if it was only a lack of sun thing. Or, I mean, the other thing was, this used to be a big pine tree here that we had the stump ground out. And maybe all that, this, you know, or the, the wood, the bits, maybe something with the, all that pine down in the soil caused an issue. Um, because I have not had a lot of experience with that. Um, I don't know if, if that was the problem or, or what it was, you know. Maybe this isn't a horrible area for, for potatoes. Maybe it's something else. But I still don't think I'll grow potatoes here again. But I have a couple more plant areas to kind of dig through that have died off. Now look here. Oh, this is another one that stayed alive long enough Oh, and that's what I was going to say earlier. So, as I was watching this throughout the summer, you know, certain plants started to die off much sooner, but other ones kind of held on a bit longer. And the ones that held on longer have the bigger potatoes. The ones that died off right first thing at the beginning, another green one, dang it. Um, but the ones that that died off right away had almost nothing on them. And most of those were the red potatoes. Whereas the white ones, and I can't tell you the varieties. This was like a mixed bag I got from Lowe's. We picked it up when we were in the garden center, kind of last minute. It was like, oh, we haven't planted any potatoes this year. We want to plant potatoes, so let's, let's get some. And so it was like a mix of red and white. Whereas in the past, I, you know, I bought specific varieties from from more, not necessarily more reputable, but more companies that dealt with that kind of thing, like local nurseries and stuff, instead of a big box store. And that might be another lesson too, that you know, when you're getting your seedlings and stuff, maybe getting them from a big box store, you might not always get the best variety or the most hardy plant. Um, if you get something from the farmer's market, from a local farmer, from a reputable seed company, you know, where you've got history with them and you know that their plants come out well, um, maybe something like that would have worked better here too. 
All right, nothing else in there. We got one more to check. Oh, that one's still got green going on, so I don't want to dig around that one yet. Or uh, it still has good foliage coming up. So this half still has good foliage. And this was a side that all died off early. But you know what? We got a few potatoes out of here. We'll get some baked potatoes, some stuff for the roaster, or make a couple of like some homemade french fries or something. It'll be okay. It's good learning. Good learning point, good lesson. That's the green one. But here's a few more. Came out okay. From the tiny ones up to some bigger ones. Ooh. So got a little a little mix going on there. And then we had a few that had ones that were that size. So overall got a good few pounds here. Probably at least 10 pounds of potatoes, I'd say. I'm, I'm just guessing, but it's a mix of disappointment and I'm also happy with what I got. So it's good, all good things. So try different things in your garden and see how they work out. Do some tests. Don't put an over amount of time of, of money and energy um, in that's an over amount of time. Don't put too much time, energy, and money into something that you're trying out as a test. Do some, you know, do a pot. Do a small garden section like I've got going on here, which is probably like, this is probably uh, four by five or something like that. It's not, not a very big section. Um, and do some tests, see how it comes out. And then next season, you know how to plan better. But. Hopefully your potatoes are coming out better than mine. Whatever's going on in your neck of the woods, your gardens, your homesteads, your chicken coops, whatever's, whatever's happening in your world, I hope it's going fantastic for you, that you are not getting eaten up by mosquitoes like I am right now. Um, I hope that your stuff is all coming together and you are learning some good lessons and being inspired to grow new things next year and try all types of different stuff and that you get good harvest but i guess that's it for now please subscribe to our channel we'll see you again soon and i uh, hope you have a great day namaste we'll cook it first